and move swiftly along to the ching, ching graph. Sorry, this is the graph of y equals to cosh x. So ching x, y equals to ching x. When we know properties of the ching function, put in a minus x, we will get a minus ching x. What does that say? It implies symmetry, okay? Symmetry at origin. Okay, so basically we can just take uh, one side of the graph and rotate it to the other side. Okay, uh, do you want to do the first derivative? Okay, never mind, we'll put ching x equals to zero, okay, at x equals to zero. So it passes through the origin, okay, and then later we can just differentiate ching x one time. Okay, we get cosh x, okay, but again, what do we know about cosh x? Cosh x would be more than zero, right? So, in this case, the, the ching x function is always increasing, okay? However, second derivative test, okay, of ching x gives us ching x again, okay? And if I'm not wrong, we will split this up into, okay, this would be more than zero when x is more than zero, and when x is less than zero, uh, this will be less than zero. Okay, I let's just verify. Okay, so we got this over here. Okay, this definition is over here. Where x goes to zero, it is zero. Okay, zero correct. So when it's more than zero, this would be greater than this, and it will be yes. This minus this will be more than zero. So this will be more than zero. So if x is less than zero, I believe this would be greater than this. So we will get a negative number. Let me just check again. Yeah, correct. Okay, so. This is to say that the first derivative, graph is always increasing, right? Graph is always increasing, so it will take some, some shape like that and pass through the origin like so. However, the rate of change of the first derivative is less than zero. Rate of change is decreasing, okay? Yes, rate of change is decreasing as we approach the zero point, okay? Because x is negative, x is less than zero. But as s, x increases, okay, the rate of change of the derivative is increasing, okay? This really shows something, and I like to point that it's not as easy as you think it is, okay? Interpreting the first derivative and the second derivative. I hope I make my explanation clear enough, but it's not as easy as you think it is. Somebody in YouTube said that his math is really good, so I'll just take some time to congratulate him on his test. However, I mean, I hope I'm in humble in really trying to teach, you know, this mathematics that I have, okay? So, finally, illustrating the graph, the chain x graph, okay? So, passes through origin, right? Okay, and that's the only point where it passes through the origin. It's always increasing, so obviously it's gonna go like that, right? Okay, it's gonna go like that. And remember, at this portion over here, the second derivative, okay, is less than zero. So that means the, the second derivative is less than zero. That means the rate of change is decreasing. The rate of change is increasing, but it is increasing at a decreasing rate. So it is increasing at a decreasing rate. At this point, the second derivative is more than zero, okay? So it's an increasing at an increasing rate. There we go, finally. Our y equals to chink x graph, okay? Now, last observation, if you would kindly pay attention, okay? If x tends towards infinity, okay? If x tends towards infinity, we can eliminate this term over here like so, okay? And this term over here like so. Why? Because one divided by e to the power of x, one divided by a very huge number, infinitely large number, we get zero. So basically the graph is just reduced to this and this over here. And now we can graph out the one or the, the, the cosh x and graph it out like this. Okay? This is the relation between the two. Now, why is this more always more than ching square graph? Well, very simple because it's of this equation, or shall I say that cosh x, okay? It's always more than ching x. Okay, let me just check on the the reasoning behind that. Yeah, can okay. If you take away the two, you will just get simply e to the power of minus x, which is more than zero. Okay, one divided by e is always more than zero. That's why the the cosh graph is always above the ching graph. Yeah, okay. Cosh x take away ching x is equals to e and e is always more than zero okay so there you go the chink graph and the cosh graph or you can just superimpose them on each other you get something like that okay 
And yeah, let's go. A, a quick test on your differentiation and first and second derivatives if you think you're good enough. Okay?